What's the Valley housing market gonna look like in March, 2023 and beyond? Well, we just got in all the numbers from January and February, and there are some trends happening in our market that might surprise you. I'm Jordan Page, and today we're gonna to dive into the numbers and data behind what's actually happening in our market and where our market's headed in the next few months, so you know what moves to make right now. All right, guys. So if you've been watching the news at all, you know our market was an emotional roller coaster last year. We set home price records in the first half of the year, then the second half was marked by a downturn fueled by rising interest rates. And that saw home prices retreat back to where they were when that year began. Now for this year, just like in all my market updates, I'm only gonna be talking about information that is fresh and local to our market. So let's talk about leading indicators. Now these are the first measurable signs of where the market is headed, and by paying attention to these leading indicators, you'll put yourself months ahead of the market, so you'll be more confident when you buy or sell. The first leading indicator I like to look at is active listings. A lot of our agents will call this inventory or supply because it literally is the inventory of homes that we have to sell home buyers. Now in this graph behind me, you can see the gold line for 2022. You'll see that since the middle of last year, the number of active listings was going up. When you have an abundance of supply, it puts pressure on the market to lower prices, okay? There's an inverse relationship between supply and price. But look at the end of last year, and also this year here in the pink. We're seeing inventory go down. Now, if this is sustained over time, it should drive prices upward over the next few months. So the next leading indicator I like to look at is pending listings. Now, these are listings that have accepted offers, but they haven't closed the deal yet. Most reports only use closed sales data, and deals can take one to two months to close, meaning looking at pending sales is a bit like looking one to two months into the future for where the average prices and sales will be. Now in the graph behind me now, you'll see the gold line for 2022. You'll see last year had a steady decline in pending sales as interest rates slowly crushed that buyer demand. But you can see this year in the bright pink line, it's like magic, buyers are coming back into the market again. Now, one thing to be concerned about though, is the fact that average pending sales prices are down about 2% since January. This could mean that despite the market picking up, people are selling their homes for less. There could be a lot of reasons for this. For example, people who listed their homes last year and it didn't sell, might finally be dropping their prices now just to get it sold. Okay, the last leading indicator is the contract ratio. Contract ratio indicates how hot a market is. Specifically, it measures the number of completed sales contracts relative to the supply of active listings. Now a balanced market will show a contract ratio of between 30 and 60. That's this white space in the middle there. The big red space indicates a hot market. And as of March 1st, the contract ratio for all areas and types of homes rose above 60, meaning we're officially in a hot market again. So over the long term, we should anticipate home prices to rise over the coming months, no matter what you've read in the mainstream media, which tends to base their reports on housing data that is a few months out of date. Now, if you were trying to buy at the bottom of the market, sorry, that's already happened. It was in the fourth quarter of last year. But congratulations, if you did buy then when everyone else was afraid to, that was good market timing on your part. But this market this year might swing back and forth a little bit. Interest rates very recently were raised nearly half a point, which can have a huge impact on the buyer demand for homes. On top of this, we usually see an increase in new listings hitting the market every spring. So if the interest rate bump slows down demand and we see the usual increase in supply, we might see prices actually go down a little bit this spring. It really is kind of a tug of war between interest rates and inventory. Over the short term, it's definitely something you wanna watch out for if you're in the market. Now, that being said, over the long term, inventory always wins. And so, here's my advice for buyers right now. A lot of people can't afford to buy with today's rates, and I get that, but if you can, then buying soon is better than buying later. Nearly every expert in the market expects modest gains in the real estate market this year. And if you wait until the next drop in interest rates, you'll A, be leaving money on the table, and B, possibly find yourself in bidding wars for properties again, those drive prices up, obviously. And my advice for sellers, the conditions are not perfect for you right now, I'm sorry. From a financial standpoint, it doesn't make sense to sell unless you need to right now. And I'd personally wait to see a few more months of growth in the market before listing if you wanna see the most profit possible in your home. Now, that being said, the worst of the market is behind us. So if you need to move for a job or for family reasons, etc., it's not the worst time, it's just not the best. You're gonna to have to be really aggressive when you market your home if you do sell and position it as the obvious choice for home buyers in your market segment. Now, as for me, I'm gonna keep giving you updates on the market every single month for the rest of the year so you always stay in the know. Thank you so much for your time. If you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe so I can keep making them for you. And with that, I'll see you next time.